Hello everyone, so I wanted to discuss something new today. Uh, this has to do with the, the assertion made by National Geographic that uh, the Iranian genome is 56% Arabian. Now that is a huge claim and it's not really substantiated in any uh, recent genetic evidence we have found. This stupid myth was also promoted by a pro-Iranian uh, regime site and you know this made me believe that you know they're just trying to promote this nonsense to say that we are somehow related to uh, Arabs but this is certainly not true so I am just throwing that out there as well this was actually promoted by a pro regime uh, site and it's pretty stupid and foolish on their part now keep in mind that these calculators are based on modern populations and often uh, irrelated modern populations are clumped together or a certain aspect of these uh, modern populations is clumped together. So it is very, it could be the case that perhaps they uh, clump together the calculatic Iranian DNA with uh, the uh, Arabian DNA but this is simply not true there's no affinity between these two populations but I think that's what might have happened here because initially they called it Arabian but then they changed it and now they are calling it uh, Persian Gulf and uh, Arabia Arabia and Persian Gulf I don't know something like that but uh, you know I am very upset about this false assertion and it has misguided a lot of people Oh sorry, uh, what they relabeled re it as is uh, Southwest Asia and the Persian Gulf. Sorry about that, my mistake. A good example of this actually is uh, South Asians, you know, often these companies uh, uh, miss, uh, you know, they put irrelated populations together. So a South Asian uh, from Pakistan, high case, would uh, probably get around, uh, you know, 35% step DNA, 45% uh, Neolithic Iranian DNA and 25% Southeast Asian DNA, whereas the Tamil from South, Asia, South India or Sri Lanka would get around... Uh, 20% Neolithic Iranian DNA and 80% uh, uh, Southeast Asian DNA. But uh, the reality is that, uh, you know, these aren't the same populations, but both of them would get 100% South Asian in the calculators, which makes no sense at all. So you see, what I am trying to get at here is that there is a huge problem here. Now, I am not going to go into depth here because my previous videos have clearly proven that Iranians are not significantly Arabian derived, perhaps uh, as some of the recent evidence indicates, not at all. So I think uh, my videos pretty much do a good job of that. But I do want to research, uh, mention a few things about uh, Nat Geo and uh, their uh, 2.0 or uh, the original uh, Geno project uh, in this video. So basically the original uh, not, you know, the original one, it was a still bit uh, skeptical, but it made more sense, you know. So, 42% uh, Mediterranean, uh, which is likely from uh, the Calcolithic Anatolians, 42% Southwest Asian, mostly from uh, the Neolithic Iranians, as well as partially from the Cal Calcolithic Iranians as well, who was, as I mentioned previously, part uh, uh, Calcolithic Anatolian as well and then the 8% European so obviously from the steppe populations the original uh, proto-indo-iranic steppe population and the 5% uh, uh, North East Asian which I have previously mentioned that uh, modern Iranians do uh, seem to show some minor uh, Asian admixture uh, likely from the Mongol invasion and the Turkic migration so that is correct as well now another thing I wanted to stress is that many may suggest that the Southwest Asian is Arabian admixture but it really isn't because actually even Pamiris from Tajikistan have around 44% of it and South Asians have around 40% as well and I have also seen that uh, the Brits have 17% as well and Greeks have around 17% as well and the uh, Georgians have 31% so it certainly is not Arabian admixture more so I think it is related to Caucasus hunter-gatherers and the Neolithic Iranians and uh, you can clearly see even uh, the Kuwaitis and uh, the uh, other a few other uh, the Lebanese do not really have it in any significant capacity uh, even less than Iranian so it certainly is not uh, the uh, uh, Arabian component. 
also the northern European is a bit low because uh, you know the Iranians actually have around 23% stepped mixture and I think the reason for this is that uh, likely it's probably due to the fact that uh, at the time they did not know what the steppe populations look like so they just clustered it with modern northern Europeans because again it's looking at modern DNA not ancient DNA but we now know that the Proto-Indo-Europeans, the original steppe populations were significantly influenced by Caucasus hunter-gatherer and Neolithic Iranian genes. Well, Neolithic Iran-like genes. So, for this reason, we can safely say that uh, the even the steppe mixture here is not uh, correct because uh, it's just looking at northern European populations, not really ancient steppe populations. And uh, actually, despite a few minor errors here and there, this is actually a fairly accurate analysis from Nat uh, Gino. You know, it clearly represents the Iranian population accurately, as accurately as uh, an old, uh, as such a calculator could, much more accurately uh, than uh, the other calculators, because it's uh, the way, the manners in which it divided the population make a bit of sense, but. For Nat Geo no 2.0, they don't make any sense at all. But uh, Nat Geo 2.0 does not make any sense at all. You know, uh, before it was labeled Arabian, but uh, you know now they labeled it Southwest Asia and per Persian Gulf. So you know there is a bit of uh, problem there. You know they probably you know there's something is a bit fishy. <laughs> but uh, even then, you know, you can clearly see that in the description they did not change it. And you know, it's saying that the Iranians are 4% Eastern African, 2% uh, Northern Africans, 4% Central Asian, 6% Asia Minor, 2% Southern Europe, and 24% Southern Asia. So, according to this, then wh where is the original Iranic component? You know, they completely bypass that and you know they're attempting to equate us with Arabs but this is completely not true you know it should be noted here that they could have entirely gone on Bandari uh, samples because the Bandaris are actually partially derived from uh, you know Arabs as well as uh, they have a few Indian admixture and African admixture as well whereas other Iranians don't really show any African admixture for the most part uh, around the uh, Iranian samples I have personally analyzed only around uh, say 2 of uh, 25 have so shown at least 1% uh, uh, African DNA so there is really almost no African admixture in Iranians and also uh, the South Asian is completely off here because you know uh, there is some uh, population similarities there but they have significant uh, ancestry from uh, around the 20% ancestry from uh, uh, tribals even the highest case has tribal ancestry and that tribal ancestry is not uh, detected in uh, Iranians and this uh, tribal ancestry component is actually more related to Southeast Asians and we don't see that in Iranians at all. I have constantly proven that uh, modern day Iranians most closely cluster with uh, the Iranians from the Calcolithic era with a bit of a uh, stepped mixture from the heavily B mechized and Yaz like uh, populations from uh, uh, Central Asia which migrated uh, uh, during the uh, first millennium BCE during the just before the first millennium BCE now I will prove that with a much more accurate uh, analysis of uh, Feli Kurds by uh, David from uh, Eurogenes and I hope you can see the uh, similarities between uh, modern Iranians and the ancient Iranians here and how really other than minor uh, East Asian admixture there is no other foreign admixture in Iranians and uh, yeah so you, uh, hopefully I illustrate this uh, for you and you understand these uh, these analyzed uh, sources were posted on uh, Faley DNA projects which is quite old uh, now but uh, David analyzed these sources not too long ago uh, I don't think the blog is active anymore but uh, when it was it was a really good blog for Faley DNA as well as Iranian DNA and I will also actually so show Iranian samples here and illustrate uh, uh, the provide a bit of evidence uh, for the beam accusation of um, the uh, Iranians who migrated into uh, Iran uh, from Central Asia and uh, illustrate the fact that they were not pure uh, Europeans as uh, many falsely believe. So the first uh, samples here analyzed were samples uh, analyzed using uh, 
Yam Naya Samara as a proxy and you know that is a bit, uh, it's not proper because the fact is that the Yam Naya Samara samples, they're a bit uh, different from the Indo-Iranian, so the Sintashta people. So, you know, they're not as accurate, but they still paint a pretty good uh, picture for us. So I will get into the analysis now. So firstly, here you can see the Bandaris the Bandaris and you know they are a very uh, different population compared to uh, other uh, modern Iranians because they derive most of their ancestry from Neolithic Iranians not Calcolithic Iranians like other Iranians so this, lead me, this leads me to believe that they are either uh, an ancient remnant population in the area which is uh, sort of unlikely or they are descendants of uh, Baloch, imported Baloch uh, from during the Arab era as well as during the Omani rule in the region and uh, you can also see they are around 4-5% Yoruba on average which some uh, you know I have seen some as high as 30 others as you know low as 3-4 uh, African percentage but you can clearly see that uh, you know a significant portion of their ancestry is not of uh, Iranic origins it's uh, very different from uh, modern day Iranians well it is of Iranic origins but it's not like uh, other Iranians and they are uh, significantly mixed people perhaps even of uh, foreign origins now after them you see the lower sample and you know lords are around the uh, well, you know, Yamnaya Samara is not a good proxy, but you know, your lords are around 72% uh, 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 Iran Calcolithic and then around 11% uh, Iran Neolithic and 13% Yamna Yamnaya. But you can see clearly that uh, the Neolithic proportion is almost equal to the Stepan mixture in the case of lords. And you, this leads me to believe that that's because the beamacization, the hybridization of those two populations in Central Asia before they arrived in Iran, uh, during just before the first uh, millennium BCE. Again, now with the Mazandarani, you can see the same exact effect. 55.8% uh, Calcolithic Iranian, a bit different from Lords, but obviously due to regional variations. And then look, 20.9% uh, Neolithic Iranian and 17.8% Yamnaya Samara, again suggesting the beamacization in Central Asia. And I will illustrate one more time this uh, uh, aspect with the Persian sample. Again, with the Persian, there is uh, the same effect around 14.8% Yamnaya Samra and 18% uh, uh, Neolithic Iranian again proving the beam accusation as well as the 61.7% Calcolithic Iranian if Iranians actually had again going back to the Nat Geo 2.0 Arabian ancestry we would see significant or we would see even a bit of Natufian ancestry as well as Levantine ancestry but they were obviously not good fits because Iranians lacked that ancestry and uh, I also want to make one point one other point, sorry, I will get into that uh, point right now. Now I wanted to say that, uh, you know, we have also detected around uh, 5 to 6 percent East Asian ancestry in uh, Iranian populations, which is best modeled by the Han uh, proxy there, and this reflects the invasions of the Mongols and Turks, but you can see it didn't have a major impact, the East Asian DNA. But nonetheless, it uh, crept in, but it's not significant. So we can say that compared to ancient Iranians, modern Iranians are around, um, it is safe to say, 90 to 95% similar with only the recent uh, Han uh, admixture or East Asian as it's a proxy for that admixture coming in uh, after, uh, the, during the alive, arrival of the Turks and perhaps even before with the Haftalite uh, invasions in the uh, 6th century. Now, before I move on to the failure analysis, I wanted to note that uh, this blogger did not note the uh, beam accusation of the uh, uh, Indo-Iranians in his blog, but I have proven it here. And actually, I will now analyze uh, the failure DNA and in, in illustrate this point further with Andronovo and Sintashta, the ancestral groups being used as proxies to great effect. Actually, before I move on, I just wanted to note that uh, the remnants of this original Aryan population are the Yagnobi people who are half Neolithic Iranian and around the half steppe derived 
and this further uh, provides evidence of this beam accusation because they have been isolated in the mountains for so long and it is my understanding that this is how the eastern Iranians look like in the past before the arrival of the Mongols and Turks because even Turkmen and the Uzbek show around 50% West Eurasian ancestry half of which is uh, from uh, Iran Neolithic and the other half is from the steppe population so proving that uh, this is there was indeed a case of hybridization in Central Asia and in the, in the past Central uh, Asian populations were very good proxies for I mean very good uh, very reflective of the original Aryan blood in the region uh, which were itself was a and uh, formed by the admixture of two populations Neolithic Iranians and steppe populations and this admixture could not have come from Iran in any capacity because at the time the Iranians were more Calcolithic Iran like not Neolithic Iran like so again this proves the beam accusation and Yaz uh, of these populations now moving on to the Phales you can clearly see here that uh, you know, firstly, I want to say these aren't one population. These, this, these results are based on uh, multiple different samples. So the Kurd Feli is not one person, it's around 10. And the same thing for the Persian, it's not one person, it's like 12. And then, you know, the, these are large samples. They're an average of samples. They're not uh, just one distinct uh, sample. Hence why you can see the uh, plus minus at the end, because it's the average of all of these samples. So now I am going to talk about the uh, Feli. Uh, Kurd samples. Ignoring the uh, first one which is modeled on Yamnaya Samara, we can see with the Andronova and the Sintashta, we can see that obviously Iranians derive the majority of their ancestry from the Chalcolithic, even the Kurds as well, but uh, obviously, but uh, you can see that the Neolithic Iranian is completely accompanied by approximately, approximately the same amount of uh, steppe mixture, which again proves the beam accusation, as well as the fact that, uh, you know, Iranians are completely not of Arab origins, but rather are natives to Iran with additional East Asian admixture uh, since the arrival of Islam, but it is very limited. Again, you can see with this Feli sample that it is uh, quite limited around only 3 to 5% uh, a bit lower than other Iranians but uh, pretty similar nonetheless finally to conclude I have clearly proven that uh, you know Iranians do not have any significant Arabian ancestry or even South Asian North African or else you know whatever other stupid calculator they were clumping us with you can clearly see that most of our ancestry is derived from the Calcolithic with the uh, additional from Neolithic and the steppe original proto-Indo-Iranians which be mechized with the Neolithic Iranians in Central Asia and then also additional uh, Haned mixture or it's just a proxy proxy for East Asian so the original uh, Nat Geo reference populations were uh, uh, very accurate but the latest ones were completely inaccurate and should be revised actually I wanted to say that we have no no Arabian ancestry at all, not in any considerable uh, deductible amounts and this should be true for almost all uh, uh, Iranic uh, peoples because uh, you know uh, it was long ago even if there was some influence it was long ago ridden or diluted and uh, hence why there is no presence we do not get any Natufian or any uh, uh, Levant Neolithic because we do not have that uh, Arabian ancestry present in our genome for the most part. I think this was just a part of uh, a Zio, Zio Saudi uh, conspiracy, you know, to, uh, you know, to just make us uh, feel bad or something like that, you know, to down our national spirit because, uh, you know, I know that uh, National Geographic has in the past promoted Saudi Arabia, writing about changes within the kingdom and how it's moving towards modernity. And also there have been some financial commitments from the Saudis to the uh, uh, national the folks at uh, National Geographic so it leads me to believe that this these results were purposely engineered because you know they make no sense even Georgians who are very close to us have no Arabian you know most of their ancestry is in the Asia Minor cluster but for us they clumped us with Arabs to make a political statement and this was wrong you know so thanks for listening and this is it for my podcast today